Hello, hello, hello. Good morning. Good morning, United States. Good evening you, uh, to the Philippines. Road download today, and it is very cold here in Florida. Actually, it's about 45 degrees, so I'm not sure if that's cold for others in the United States, but it is cold here for Florida for me. It's usually sunny, and Florida is the sunshine state of the United States. I want to greet everybody in the Philippines, uh, Mang and Pang, and Sarah, Sarah, magandang gabi. Good evening to Philippines. Thank you for listening. Thank you for joining me. And this is actually, Road Download is a fellowship with amongst the Filipino citizens also, not just in the United States. Hello, kamusta po? Kamusta kayo dyan? Um, and today, I am so thankful for Tuesday. As long as the earth endures, there's a time and a season. And the day is set for us for mercies that are new, for new things that God's going to reveal to us, and also for the greatness of God to be manifested. Today we glorify God. Today we thank the Lord. Today we just lift up His holy name. Today we, we praise Him. We bring up the glory to Him. Good evening, Ray. Good evening. Good morning. Hi, uh, Pastor Arun from India. Hello. Thank you for coming in. Everybody, come on in and join in. Anthony, good morning. Pastor Anthony Young. Boy, I miss you. I miss your uh, show. And we're going to have to do road download together once more sometime. And we'll schedule it in the morning. And to those who are coming in, I want to let you know that you are chosen. You are chosen. You're special. God loves you so much. God created the whole earth, the whole earth before you were born. God has already given us our inheritance. God gave us this whole earth to manage. God gave us this earth so that we can lead. And we can replenish it. We can create based on what God wants to do here on earth. We are the creators that God sent here on earth. And look at the earth and the world now. Um, good morning, Ray. Good evening. And look at the earth now and see how prosperous it is. Look at technology. So God is so good. God has so much plan for all of us and to even the next generation that this earth will be like it is in heaven and it shall come to pass it shall come to pass and that is the hope that we have the hope of glory the promises of god and also not just his promises but christ himself he has already proven of what we're going to be and have in the future so we have to look at the future in a more uh, grandiose way greater way greater things because God is after progression and improvement and just increasing in the kingdom of God here on earth. So I want to just share with you the Tuesday takeout. And when I thought about this yesterday, uh, to think about, you know, uh, what to share here on Kingdom uh, Road Download, the word takeout came out of me. I don't know why, but it just, it just, did it was just dropping my spirit of the takeout you know um i work on the road a lot so i do a lot of taking out of food from restaurants or from even fast food yes i'm sorry i'm one of those who go to the fast food stores and to those who are health conscious forgive me and i'm trying to watch all the uh food that i'm eating and i'm actually really trying to get head on it uh starting 2019 so when the word takeout came to my spirit i said okay what is it that you want me to share holy spirit for the word takeout and i just want to hello good morning papa b i want to share this with you hi paul um hi paul barry i want to share this with you 
in as a metaphor as a metaphor okay I'm not saying, hey, this is written in the Bible. I know there are a lot of Bible scholars over there. Hey, I'm not really a Bible scholar. I only trust the Holy Spirit and what He has loads on me and the words that I read and the things that I study. And then I allowed the Holy Spirit to just work through me. So the word takeout. Um, when I looked at the word takeout in the dictionary, so I had to look at it first, what it truly means. When do you hear the word takeout most of the time? Where do we hear and when do we hear the word takeout most of the time? Isn't it always referring to a restaurant? It always refers to food. And when you say takeout, I'm going to not just generalize it coming from a restaurant or from even a grocery store. You ask them to prepare food for you and you bring it out and you take it out. There are restaurants now that are making doing dinner to where it's ready and all you have to do is pick it up and take it out. So, and also one more thing, this is very common is when there is a celebration or an occasion in someone else's house, don't you also take out food, the leftover, the take out what's been served in the house, in a hotel, in any events. We just kind of stash something out and take it all with, out with us. And we want to take it home. And, you know, we'd want to take it home and enjoy it more. So whatever it is in the restaurant, we take it so we can enjoy it. So the word take out, the word take out means, um, you know, it is a prepared food package to be consumed from one place to the other. So it is already a prepared food. When you look at it, it's a prepared food package and process so that when we take it out, we're just going to enjoy it. And this refers mostly to restaurants. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and go to the restaurants. A restaurant is an establishment. A restaurant is an establishment that caters to serve people for prepared food so that they don't have to prepare their food, start buying to go to the grocery, uh, spend money for all the things they need, the utensils to cook food. So when this word came out, uh, the takeout, I want to compare this. I want to compare us sons of God and children of God as an establishment of the kingdom of God that's in the inside of us. Imagine yourself like you're a restaurant, like you're a grocery, that you are fully packed of food that people are looking for. The food is a commodity that everyone is looking for. The same thing with the kingdom of God. Everyone is looking for, they have a craving for the gospel of the kingdom of God and Christ, yet they didn't know what they're actually looking for. They won't know what actually they're looking for until an establishment that brings out and offers out food for takeout will be established. So when you create a restaurant for some kind of dish, they will not know that your dish is so special. They won't even know what kind of uh, special dessert you make unless you create an establishment and you start producing it. So we as sons of God and children of God are like that. That each one of us has a specialty. Each one of us has a food to offer. We have a food to offer this world. What did Jesus said to the disciples? Listen to this. I know he said, I am the bread. And he said also, when he met the Samaritan woman at the well, and the disciples were looking for him, you know, like, is he not hungry? Because they were trying to food, find food for him. Jesus said, my food is to do the will of God. Our food is to do the will of God. Now, let me backtrack just a little bit so I can tell you about what this takeout means. Takeout in the world systems, you know, refers to the food or the bread or the drink. And as a kingdom citizen, 
We are an established kingdom of God in the inside of us that we also outsource, that we also provide what people can take out. But what we bring to them, what we offer them are the things of the kingdom of God, the spiritual things that we can offer to them that they can take out from each one of us. And where am I going to this? And let me just go ahead and, and saying this again. We, you know, one more example is we need to be in a trading and a market world where God is after his business in this world. Business means trading. We're transacting. So people on the earth or those who are not believers of Christ are looking to transact you know, for something that's so valuable, just like a treasure, everybody's looking for that treasure. Everybody's looking for that pearl. Everybody is looking for that um, unique diamond. Everybody's looking something that's valuable and that will feed them, you know, that will satisfy their appetite spiritually and I'm talking about this now that will satisfy their appetite also physically. So we as children of God, we are temples of Christ. We are separate temples right now. But as a corporate people, as when we're together, we provide one common thing. That is the spirit of, of the kingdom of God, which is joy, peace, righteousness, faith, love, hope, all of that we offer to this world. So I want to just give this verse to you. When, we, when the restaurants offer food, they don't give an unprocessed food. The food they offer is ready to go. It is so ready to go. All, all the others they have to do is pick it up and it's ready to be eaten. Now we as kingdom citizens and children of God, what are people taking out from us? What are they getting out of us that they can take without them processing it, but they can eat off of it. Now in a restaurant behind the scene, all the workers and all the employees are processing the food, putting them together. And that is the work of the Holy Spirit in us, in the inside of us, is the work of the Holy Spirit processing us, renewing us, so that we can bear fruit. Then the fruit should be ripe enough for others to take it. Now, what I'm trying to say here is that when we are ready to be the bear, the tree bearing fruit, tree bearing the no the other way around a fruit bearing tree we should be in a position that the fruit that others get from us is the ripe process prepared and ready to go and sometimes it requires for us to be patient to allow God to process us that the others can take not an immature or premature fruit or food, not food that's lacking salt or pepper. We want to offer a takeout from us that's fully prepared that whoever picks up on that food will be blessed and take it on and come back to us again and want more food of the same type that they got from us. As a restaurant manager, we want customers to keep coming back. We want to be the producer of the food that's quality and a food that will bless them physically and a healthy one. So we as citizens and children of God, we ought to bear fruit. We ought to be bring food. What food do we offer to others spiritually? Not just physically. I'm comparing this spiritually. Because look at Jesus. If you ask, if we ask ourselves, what did we take out? What we, did we get out of Christ? What did we get out of Christ? Having the kingdom and his shoulders manifesting it. Did we take out something 
or more of something out of Christ. We actually took the whole of him. We took him in a full spirit as a mature son and put it in our spirit. And we want him because he satisfies our hunger. He satisfies our thirst. He satisfies our lack. He is the food and he is the bread that is of the heaven. He is the manna that we need here on earth so that when we receive him and get filled with him, we can now produce the food that this people or, or others, the spirit and human being can get out of us. Now, this is an assignment. This is an assignment that everyone who is filled with Christ, you have something to give and you have something that others can take out of. You have something in you that others can take out of and make an influence to them so that they will keep coming back to you and wanting more of you and what's inside you. This is how we're going to influence the world. Now, let me take you to John 17. And I'm looking at my time as usual. John 17, because this is where I'm going to finish it up. John 17, 14 to 16. This is what Jesus said. Jesus was praying for us. He was praying for us and for those who's going to believe. So I'm the I'm an answer. You are an answer to Jesus' prayer. Because this prayer was 2,000 years ago. So when he prayed for those who's going to believe, I'm an answered prayer to Christ. Christ, you know, I am a product of Christ's prayer for those who believe. Because now I believe in Christ. You know, I believe in Christ. I love Christ. I am in him. There's nowhere else, none else I could go. You know, but to the source of life and to the being that I came from. And the same thing with you. Hi, Arlene. And so Jan, on John 17 verses 14 to 16, he said to the Father, I have given and delivered to them your world, your word. And the world hated them because, listen to this. This is Jesus' declaration. I'm going to say this again before you go to sleep, before you start your day. This is the declaration of what Jesus said. Thank you, Lord. He said, I have given them and delivered them to your word and the world hated them because they are not of the world. Jesus said this. We are not of the world. Jesus said, I'm going to repeat that again, that we, they are not, he's referring to us, he's referring to the believers, that they are not of the world. That's why the world will hate us, just like the world hated Jesus. Because he said here, just as I am not of the world. We do not belong to the world. We are in the world, but not of the world. And then listen to this. He said, I do not ask. There's a prayer that Jesus is the reason why we're still here in the world. So if your world seems to be falling apart, you know, we think, oh, why am I still in this world? This world is just terrible. It's chaotic. It's confusion. It's just so much going on. Negative things. I don't want to be in this world. Yes, you don't want to be in this world because you're not of this world. You're not of this world. This is not the world that you're living in right now, currently in the spiritual realm. We're just present here right now because Jesus prayed for you and I and the believers to what? Do not take them out of the world. Well, thank you, Jesus, for, the, for all this that we can partake of what you've gone through. To be in the world, but not of this world. We're going to experience what Jesus experienced being in the world, but he's not of this world. So he prayed for you and me. And that's why we're still here. That's why we're saying, why am I still alive? Why am I doing here? What's my purpose in life? What is the, what in the world is going on to this world? It's because Jesus prayed for you. And thank goodness, God answered his prayer. He's not taken out of the world. He didn't take us with him. 
do not take them out of the world but and this is a promise listen wow this is so important and i want you to get so encouraged that we are in the world yes we're gonna we're gonna have sufferings we're gonna have hardship we're gonna feel what the world is feeling that's the world that we are in but we're not of it that means we're already uh ahead we're ahead of this world we're way ahead and way above of this world yet our body is still in this world because we have a purpose and assignment that he said do not take them out of the world but that you will keep and protect them from the evil one if God answered Jesus prayer to not take out of this world right now and that he has delivered the word to us then definitely the word of Jesus saying keep them protected and keep them from the evil one will also be real and coming to pass. So we are protected. We are kept by the wings of the Holy Spirit. We are protected by the Almighty God. Why? Because we're still here in the world. It is Jesus' prayer that we stay in the world. He didn't say to stay in the church. He didn't say to just be in the church, get together, get yourself separate from the word. Let's do something on our own program that we are talking about the word of God, that we are pleasing God, that we are worshiping God, and let the world be like it is right now because we're not of this world that's not the point of Christ he wanted us to be in the world that means we're, we're, we're assigned to be with those who are going through trials who are sick who are um, broken hearted we are to be in all parts of the world we are to be in a system cosmos system the world we are to be in every system of this world and make it like a system of the kingdom now let me let me just um, this something just came up with me in the spirit when I know I heard I, I heard it in my spirit about the kingdoms the kingdoms on earth, the kingdoms of earth, if you study the kingdom on earth, the kingdoms in different nations, they have a kingdom system. But let me tell you this, the kingdom system that is of this world is way far behind of what the kingdom system is in the heaven. If the kingdom system of this world is of man, kingdom system of man is much, much lesser than what the kingdom system of heaven is about. So even when we compare and talk about what is the kingdom of God, it is just like this, it is just like this, and it's just like this. The king, there's no other kingdom on earth none no kingdom on earth that can compare that can encompass the kingdom of God there is none like the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven you know it is it is overpowering the kingdom systems even of this world the kingdom systems of this world is finite the kingdom system of this world is still limited. So even though there's a king, let's say in Saudi Arabia, even though he's a king in that nation, he still is limited. Unless he taps into the kingdom system of heaven, where the source, the supernatural thing flows through him, then and then, can you imagine a kingdom here on earth that is tapped into the kingdom system of heaven and how it would be? It will be that of the kingdom of heaven. It will be like it. So, I'm going to finish soon. What is it 
as a citizen of God, what do others take out of you or take out from you? You are an establishment of the kingdom of God, providing, resourcing something for others to eat off. Not just physically, but to eat off spiritually. Is Are they taking out of you your time? Are they taking out of you an inspiration? Are they taking out of you a prayer? Are they taking out of you kindness? Are they taking out of you your uh, identity? Are they taking out of you your purpose? Are they taking out of you your spiritual gift? Your spiritual calling? Are they taking out of you your divine abilities and divine uh, power? These are the things that is available only through you in the Holy Spirit. This is what the world is looking for. They want a takeout, take home, ready to eat and satisfy their need. And we are individual establishments that is providing what others are looking for. When you go out there, what is it that you feel and you know is coming out of you? Just like when that woman with the bleeding for 12 years, Jesus felt power came out of him. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He felt power coming out of him. The, that woman took out, has taken out, what she needed by faith hello Mary hi Mary let me let me see if I can have you join uh, I see you anybody wants to join the uh, road download and share your insight but don't you want to be don't we all want to be like Jesus God, I want to be like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus that I'm bleeding with the blood of Christ that anyone who touches that will take out something from me for what they need, for wholeness, for healing, for mercy, for love. Okay, let me see. Okay, Mary. Hi, Mary. She wanted to join the road download. So I'm just saying this to all of you. And my heart, my hearts get touched when I feel and when I sense. Okay, I'm adding you, Mary. Mary Alvarez, I'm adding you. We have to get to a point that we really want not just to pour out not just to pour out ourselves, not to just keep giving, but where we stand in our lives, that when we go somewhere, that when we are in an event, in an occasion, in the marketplace, in the supermarket, that when someone touches us, something changes in their lives. I want to get, we are like that now. I don't want to say that we want to get to that point because I'm claiming, I'm claiming that we are that now, that we are, that we are in the world, that we are protected from the evil one. We should be the refuge for others. We should be a safety dwelling place for others because we should be the, the, the place, not the building, not just the building as a shelter or a place for rescue. We should be that when people come close to us, they feel the security. They feel the love. They feel safe. They feel secure. They feel whole. They feel joy. They feel peace. You know, I pray and I pray, I pray for every one of us. You know, let's not be so focused on the things that's going on in this world. 
Let's not focus on what we don't have or not have or this and what's going on. Let's keep standing. Let's keep standing knowing that what comes out of us is pure and is are the things of the kingdom of God. And I don't know about you. I'm trying to make you join. Okay, join Mary. I, I see you, Mary. I tried to put you in. If we truly, individually, if we truly, individually, be so into God, be so into being like Christ, don't pursue those things. Don't pursue the things of this world. Don't go after the outcome. Go after the cost. Go after the cost and not the effect. Go after the root and not just the trunk and the fruit. Go after where you can be so powerful that you are so effective that people cannot resist you. And you probably hear this most of the time because it is my ultimate desire. It is my ultimate desire, O oh Lord, that everything out of me, everything that comes out of me and that everything people take out of me are the things of God. Nothing else. Not coming out of my flesh. Everything that everyone can get out of me is something that is of the heaven. We should continually allow the Holy Spirit to renew us and process the food, process the ingredients. We have all the ingredients in the inside of us to prepare a great dish and food for others. I don't want them just to get the salt that's in the inside of me. I don't want them just to get the light that's in the inside of me. I want them to be able to get everything that they need in their lives through Christ and in the Holy Spirit that's in me. That the Holy Spirit will convict them and, con and counsel them that they may receive him. That they may receive the life that is in me. That they may receive just like Christ. He gave his life to, for us to receive life. He gave his life for us to receive life. The food that we release. The food that we offer. The food that others can take out from us should be seasoned, should be seasoned with life to activate the life that's in them so that they may see who they are as children and as a chosen, uh, a creation, man that God so loved that they can go back in the kingdom of God. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Pastor Jay. Thank you, um, Edith. Um, thank you so much to everyone. And my time is up. Um, I just want to share that Tuesday takeout. Before you go out in the United States, what can people get from you as a takeout? That when they get it, they'll bring it to their household. And once they bring it to their household, their household will enjoy what they have taken out of you. Just like the Samaritan woman, he took out something from Christ. He brought, she brought it to the village, the woman and the well. She brought it to the village and told them what they have taken out, what he has taken out of Christ. So you're being processed. The ingredients in you that's in the Holy Spirit is processing you, is refining you, is putting you together so that when come, others come to you, they can take out that which of the kingdom of God is and the life in Christ. Thank you so much. Hello to everybody. Road Download Tuesday.
Tuesday takeout, and I pray, and I am um, hoping, not just praying, that you got something out from me today with that word and sharing with you. Thank you so much. Uh, I love you all. Share this if you want to share it to, add to anyone who missed this. But let I want to let you know that people want to take out something from you. As a child of God, you are that provider. Thank you so much. I love you all. God bless you.